Welcome to the French Drain Man channel. We're going to go over some do's and don'ts for French drains. I'm going to show you some of our competitor systems that failed and we had to replace them. And I'll show you how to build a French drain that'll last forever. Let's begin. Okay. Here's a failed French drain that we did not install. None of our systems fail. They, a stone gravel French drain will last forever. A French drain that's installed correctly will last forever. Simply put. What happened here is they didn't use a geotextile fabric to separate the stone from the subsoil. So you can see the stone and subsoil migrated into one another. You can see that pipe is just plugged. The inside of that pipe is not plugged. It's plugged externally. The water can't get through all the clay and stone mixed since they didn't use a filter fabric. You need to use a non-woven geotextile filter fabric. We'll get into that in a little bit here. So there again, you can see that that is a real shallow pipe. We just cut the sod off and the pipe was pushed up to the surface. The frost will do that in Michigan. In any place in the north where you have a real winter. Here's another failed system. We did not install this. I want to keep emphasizing that. I'm showing you pictures of failure. These are things that we run into out in the field. This pipe was you know, just a pipe that we abandoned because uh, we went in, put a system in that would last forever. This pipe has a filter fabric on it. We don't endorse that for a French drain, a yard drain. I'll go over that in detail. You can see they used a larger stone aggregate, which I like, but they didn't use a geotextile non-woven fabric. So the stone migrated into the subsoil. The subsoil migrated into stone, and you can't get water through that. It's plugged. So the pipe wasn't plugged. The pipe, you know, you can see some dirt that's pushed in it from the backhoe or excavator but the pipe was not plugged. You just couldn't get water to the pipe. That's the problem. It's because of how they installed it. So here's a, another, we see this a lot. They, this is a corrugated drain pipe and they wrapped it with drainage fabric. You don't want to do this either. This is another bad idea and it just results in failure. The, these systems only work if you can get the water to the pipe. And the way we build them with so much stone, the water will move through the gravel. This was another failed pipe, and it just went to a pop-up. And then the water was supposed to define gravity and go up into the storm drain catch basin, which that don't work. So we core drilled here, and then we ditched out a really big trench. And I'll show you how we go about building our French drain systems. Okay, we use an excavator or backhoe, and you can see the gentlemen down in the trench were ditching out a really nice French drain uh, trench here. We're taking all that dirt out. Notice how there's not piles of dirt. There's not piles of dirt anywhere on this job site. As soon as the shovel gets a scoop of the heavy soil, he's putting it in a mini loader and we're getting it off site. Here's another example. You can see we have a spotter in the trench. He's looking for sprinkler pipes, and he's also taking topo readings with a laser level. To uh, He's got a transit on site on a tripod, and he's communicating with the operator. Now look how clean that is. We're taking all the dirt, and we're scooping it out of this trench, we're putting it in this mini loader, and we're carrying it out to the front to dump trucks now compare these other methods. They bring in a trencher and look at the damage they do. Look at the damage to that turf. Now, not only most trenchers are only going to make a six inch groove, that's not ditching a job. You need to ditch a job for a good French drain. I do know that they make big commercial trenchers that will go wider than six inches. I'm well aware. However, I want to restore the homeowner's yard. I don't want to destroy it. I want to be as I want to go in and be as non-invasive as possible. That's that's the goal here. So not only does a trencher cut through sprinkler lines, 
and you got to deal with that later and disturb your turf. And it takes a while to mend turf. So it's, it's an eyesore for a few months. So here's a trencher versus an excavator. You got a nice deep groove, nice clean job. We put the plywood down so we don't disturb the turf at all. So we can get the machinery in and out of there. All our machines are on tracks, not rubber tires. That's important. Okay, so a lot of people ask, what's the difference between a curtain French drain and a perimeter French drain? And, and these pictures here will, will help you out a lot. We were able to get these pictures when the leaves finally fell off the, the trees. It's late season right now. And uh, that's a perimeter French drain because it follows the, the fence, the property line, now, a curtain French drain would be around the house. So it would be up tight to the house and go around the house. That's a curtain French drain. So the way you build them is the same. It's just when people refer to a curtain drain, they're referring to going around the building. When they're referring to a perimeter French drain, they're referring to going around the property. So a perimeter French drain will catch all your neighbor's water that's coming into your property, which is a problem for a lot of people. This this makes for happier neighbors right here. Just put in a French drain. And then also all your own water that runs to the back of the lot. And we take it either to a waterway or a storm drain catch basin, whatever there is. We'll get the water out of there. Another great shot of just how neat and clean. You don't see a big pile of dirt anywhere. We take all the dirt out. You don't want to put any of the dirt back in. That's a... That's key here. You don't want to put any of the dirt back in. You want to put all stone in. Now you can hardly see it, but here's the turf. We cut the turf off with two and a half inches of root and just laid it to the side. That'll go back in over the system. I'll show you that later. But look at a trenching method. Look at how much damage that is doing. What a mess it's making. And then instead of taking away all the dirt, they're just going to put in a little bit of stone over a pipe and push that dirt over top of it. Now, if you have poor percolating soil, putting that same soil back in is just going to plug the system. Now, the homeowner will think that it works initially because there's so much air. Look at all the air pockets. And that dirt's freshly turned up like that. It'll take a while before it's compacted. So... The contractor could actually make a way, we call it a cash grab when they come in and they build systems like this. It's unfortunate too. Now I end up having to replace these systems all the time. But once this soil settles and it becomes compacted and there's no more air pockets for the water to find its way to the little bit of stone they do put in, these things quit working. So we put a big, as you can tell, it's a real big ch uh, channel, real big trench. Here's another example of how neat and clean we are. You don't see a big dirt pile to the left or to the right. Here's the sod. You can barely see it laying over the sod. Nice bluegrass here in Michigan. It's where we are located. Now that's a non-woven geotextile fabric. That's what you want to use. That's a soil separator. It's like a felt. Water runs right through it. It separates the stone from the subsoil so you don't get that mix that I showed you. You know, real quick, I'll just go back to that opening shot. They didn't use a non-woven geotextile fabric to burrito wrap the stone and pipe as one. So that's how you end up with failure. And when you go ahead and use a pipe with a filter, uh, filter wrap on it, well, now you're not wrapping the stone. So the stone migrates into subsoil. The subsoil migrates into stone, and the system quits. So what good is it? It's not helping. If you have a pipe that's not plugged, if you can't get the water to it, the system's still not going to work. So I understand the theory behind it, and I see how some people get tricked by it, but, but don't. You want to wrap the entire system, the stone and pipe is one. Now, when going under sidewalks or driveways you got to bore, and you got to use Schedule 40. That's what you want to do when you're going under concrete. So here you can see we did a bore, and we're 
putting a, a a couple of couplings together so that the corrugated pipe will snap right on the schedule 40. And here's another one showing the guys working on the connection points of the schedule 40 that's underneath the sidewalk. This is six inch. How do you get six inch under a four inch slab of concrete when you don't have very much fall to the street without leaving a belly in this big pocket of water? Well, go to a Y, some six to four reducers, and you go to two four inch pipes. That's how you get a six inch pipe under a sidewalk without leaving a belly and making a mess and having a system that works properly. Uh, six inch pipes usually come in place when you have 200 feet or more upstream, so keep that in mind. You know, it's just a generic number to work with. There's so much involved as far as the math, uh, the area, uh, the yard, rooftops, all that is figured into everything that we design. Okay, so I'm not bashing Home Depot. I love the place. You know, I'm like any guy. I'm a junkie for tools. I love, you know, I love the place, but there, there's a, there's a place for this kind of pipe, and there's a type of soil for this kind of pipe. And, I, and it fits in the agricultural community on certain farms just fine. I don't like this pipe. I don't use it for my systems. I'll show you what I use. Look how big those inlets are. We use a large aggregate, not a P-stone. We use a really large aggregate. So we can get away with a big opening like that. You can fit a U.S. quarter in that. Again, you know, this is what you get at the big box stores. The inlet that we have on our pipe, we are going to evacuate water so fast. That's what people want. Nobody's got any patience anymore, and I understand that. That's fine. We'll build you a system that screams. We'll, we'll build you a system that moves water. Another commonly asked question, my sprinkler system, how do, how do you deal with that? Well, we go under it. We go under all the sprinkler lines, and you can see how we were very careful we actually cut this sprinkler line and then put in couplers. You can't see the connections because they're on the other side of the, the non-woven geotextile filter fabric. All right, so now we got our non-woven geotextile filter fabric and we got our pipe at the bottom of the trench. Yes, we do put our pipe at the bottom of the trench. I know that some people instruct you to put a few inches underneath the, the, uh, the pipe. For a backyard drainage system in Michigan, you don't want to do that. As long as you're using a geotextile non-woven filter fabric where the water just runs through it and you're separating the soil from your system, you can lay your pipe right on the filter fabric, the non-woven geotextile filter fabric. You want to lay that pipe right on it. That way the frost can't heave this pipe to the surface. Here's a bigger system. You can see there's two four-inch corrugated pipes in that system at the bottom. You can see the non-woven geotextile filter fabric. Going back to these failed systems, they didn't wrap the stone with the pipe. They just put a wrap around the pipe. That's why it failed. These always fail. That's how you want to do it. Wrap your stone and your pipe as one. This black non-woven geotextile filter fabric that's what you want to do. This is a backyard where the swale went down the center of it. So water would always lay in here. You could always tell when somebody's had a water problem for years. This was a situation where they had water problem for the past decade and finally found us and we helped them out with it. How you can tell, we have beautiful bluegrass here in Michigan. So when you see grass like that, that means there's low oxygen, that means saturated soils, and it chokes out the blue grasses, and these undesired grasses can actually grow in those conditions, and that's what you end up with. So when we finished the system, they went ahead and hired a company to come in and cut out and remove all that turf and put in some new blue grass. Here's a great shot showing you just how thick the sod is that we cut out. We take two and a half inches of roots, you can see those slabs of turf, nice bluegrass. You can see the large aggregate that we're pouring into 
our French drain system. This one is running out to the street. This one did go under the walk. Nice and clean. We take the non-woven fabric. You can see a staple, a staple. We staple it. Done. It's wrapped. It's a burrito wrap. It's what we call it in the industry, the building industry. So the stone and pipe is wrapped as one. There's one more piece of sod that goes in. These pieces have already been set in place. So tell me, would you rather have this or would you rather have, well, this, this system here is 18 inches. Everything's specced out to handle the, the task at hand. So people always ask how wide and how deep. They all vary. It depends on the application. So here you see a system's pretty wide, 18 inch wide. Um, and, and I know this, this system happened to go, this particular one went uh, 24 inches deep. Okay, so what is with the duct tape? I'm digging up these systems and having to replace them. I'm going to help you guys out with that. Show you the right tape. You want to use a PVC tape. It's known as a tile tape. It's made, it's a, it's PVC, and it's super, super stretchy, super sticky. Look at that. Look at that. You can see it's watertight. You can see how it just forms right to the shape of the pipe. You know, the, the manufacturer says this material is going to end up lasting two to 500 years. So this is, don't use duct tape. Don't use silicone. Use tile tape.